tonight in a theme that rhymes. God, work with my mind. Get me prepared for what you have for me. There are many of you, you don't have things tonight that you should have. Therefore, we should already be possessing certain things tonight, but you don't have it. You don't have it. And the reason you don't have it is your mind. Finally, when, you are conf when you're walking according to truth, it says when it comes to truth, truth again, God's word, God's will, it is that you are harmonious or in agreement with truth. See, when it comes to truth, when it comes to God, the most high, when it comes to his word, when it comes to his will, I want to be at harmony. I want to be in agreement with God's will. Listen, for my life. I want to be harmonious on accord with God's word with his will. Listen, what is this saying? This is saying that I don't want to fight the truth. I don't want to fight God's will. Woo! If it's God's will for me to go through a fiery trial, I don't want to fight that. I want to be in harmony with what God desire for me to go through. You know what amazes me about Daniel is even though Daniel knew the other rulers had set him up and tried to find fault in him to have him executed or killed. When they looked like their plan was successful, we never see Daniel fighting. Oh, come on, somebody to get out of trouble. See, most of us, we spend more time fighting you're fighting what God sent to better you. See, you fight truth. But you ain't going to get to where God wants you to get fighting truth. You have to learn to come in agreement with truth. With the word. Now, let me show y'all why that is so important right there. Go with me to the book of Amos. Good teaching this morning. Because we're finna really get into something real. And, and so I don't want y'all to be offended when I get to dealing with certain stuff. Because you should know by now that when it comes to the truth, everybody is not harmonious or in agreement with truth. Woo! There's some folk in our family that know we've been saved for years. But they are still not in agreement. Listen to me. When it comes to what we walk by. So I may ask you, y'all, y'all back in church? Back in church? We've been back in church. There's a lot going on out here. You back in the bar? Or you back in the club? Come on. It's amazing what some folk feel is essential. And then they have their list of things that, that's not quite as, as essential. Mm. So watch this right here. We're talking about being in agreement with truth, right? I don't want to lose y'all. This is too important this morning. Notice Amos 3. Amos 3 and 1. No, notice this. Now y'all got to really listen carefully. Because we're talking about being in agreement with truth. Truth is God. I'm finna prove it. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, now right there, God letting them know I've been good to y'all. I brought y'all up from the land of Egypt. And now I have a word, watch this, that I'm going to speak against you. God got a problem with his people. Notice verse 2. You only have I known. Of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you. For all your iniquities. Can two walk together. Unless they are agreed. See normally we use it for marriage. We use it for brotherly relationship. And it's okay to do so. But contextually. When God said can two walk together. Except they be agreed. He was speaking of himself. And his people. He was letting his people know. You can't walk with me. If you're not in agreement. With me. 
What caused God to say that they were not in agreement with him? Their lifestyle. Their lifestyle. Notice this again. Notice verse number two. Woo! You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you. I'm going to deal with you concerning all your iniquities. You are not in agreement with truth. You are walking, you are living contrary to the truth. Notice his words carefully because they're not my words and I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you for living contrary to truth. Now the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He says in Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I do not change. Now here he is telling them, I've been good to y'all, yet now you don't want to be in agreement with truth. Listen, isn't it amazing how some folk get blessed Woo! And then they want to go against what blessed them. They get the blessings, but stop worshiping the one who blessed them. Oh, yeah, I told you going to get a little tough. See, it's amazing how God's people will turn on him and go against truth or his word and as it was back then so it is right now that you have people that when you look at where God brought them from you know without doubt that he has been good to them but now they are walking contrary to truth now they're talking against truth watch and for some folk all it takes for them to do this is a good job or a high promotion and people start thinking more highly of themselves than they need to. Or oh, a certain bank account. Now I don't need God the way I needed him when I was broke. Ooh, now the business is self-sufficient and it's moving and it's flowing and it's prospering. So now I don't really need to seek God like I used to seek him for a plan and, and, and for a strategy. It's amazing. And see we actually live in a time. Where people have no problem walking. Contrary to truth. Listen I'm not just talking the sinner. Because I expect the sinner to do it. But I'm talking about lukewarm church folk. Who no longer want to hear the truth. I'm coming at you. Coming at us. But would rather walk in lies. You know, you have folk like that. They look for a church where the preacher is going to lie to them. Don't deal with my sin. Whoa. In some churches, all they want is a preacher who can sing good, who can raise a hymn or bring the house down with a song. And they're happy with that. As long as you don't deal with sin. Uh -huh. There are some people leave church and they pastor will hoop everything. He hooped the ABCs. And ain't gave the people a word in years. But before I ask them, what did your pastor, man, pastor got to hooping today and actually hooped the ABC. We were so happy up in there. See, listen to me. We don't need no foolishness like that. If you're going to please God, you got to hear the things you do that displease him. And it takes a strong pastor to preach such. And the word that I have for us this morning is that when we look at the overall church in its backsliding condition, where any and everybody is a Christian now without walking according to the truth, the devil is a liar. Folk no longer putting God first, got everything before him. But the preachers are telling them that you okay. You mean I'm okay? 
if I'm worshiping false gods, if I become an idol worshiper and I only want to worship God part time, I'm all right, Reverend. Yeah, you good. A major Baptist preacher in Atlanta said that he no longer see anything wrong with. Said that since COVID came, he learned to loosen up. And now he don't see nothing wrong with canceling church or not even having church if he want to go to a Falcons game. Just cancel church. Thousands of members. That's idolatry. Says it openly. Any member that stay at his church is walking in lies. Oh, y'all got mad about that. Oh, y'all want to rise up, don't you? But see, watch this. Get in trouble. And call the Atlanta Falcons organization. See if they'll help you. See if they'll come to your rescue. Keep putting Netflix before God. Call the Netflix office. That's how folk put Netflix before God. When God tell you to pray, but you too busy. Always caught up in that television, in that iPod, or on that iPhone. See if your new device will save you. See if your iPhone can heal you. See what your... See if the internet can bring you out the way that I did. I'm preaching straight up truth. And the main corporate to God's people not walking in truth is phony. Pseudo-prophets Bishops, pastors, and apostles. 